Hello everyone and welcome to another Build a Boat for Treasure video. Today I'll be showing you how to make a tank that is mobile friendly and has working treads. So without much further ado, let's get right into it. So first what we're going to do is we're going to take a brick and we're going to place it down. We're going to scale it in so that it's one stud wide on all sides. And then we're going to make it six long. And next we're going to place whatever block of your choosing that you want the treads to be made of on top and make it the same exact size. Now we we'll do these ones on the sides that we're going to scale into one stud wide and make it one and a half studs long. And we're going to duplicate that to both sides of the tread. And over here we're going to make one that is uh, two studs wide and we're going to leave it at two studs wide in both directions for now so that we can place the hinges on it. And now that the hinges are there, we can remove this little extra piece so it's 1.5 as low. Now we're going to color everything the way we want it, so I'm going to make the obsidian a lighter color since it darkens whatever paint it is. Uh, let's turn the saturation up. That looks better. And now we're going to take our select tool. Sorry. There we go. And we're going to turn the transparency of the bricks to zero. And then we're going to select everything else, not the bricks. We're going to shake it and we're going to put the collision off. Now, with our move tool, we're going to grab the bricks and we're going to push it inside of the tracks. The reason we turned all the collision off is to reduce lag. Now, this is optional. You can remove one of these hinges to make it less laggy. Um, I recommend doing this if you're on a mobile device like a tablet or a phone. So now we're going to duplicate the treads. Um, you can do any amount of them really, but I recommend doing this amount that I'm going to do here. So we're going to make this batch of four first. And now we're going to duplicate this batch of four twice. And now we're going to take this thing of four and we're going to make it on the sides as well. If this would stop lagging. There we go. And got that positioned right over there. And now instead of doing all that work again, we're just going to copy this entire thing, uh, move it up a little bit. And then once it's done loading, we're going to flip it upside down like this. And then we're going to move it back down on top of the others. And that's going to be our whole uh, first tread. And there it goes. Now we're going to build the uh, wheels that are going to power these treads, so it's going to be a little tricky. Um, positioning these is not that easy. Um, usually you just kind of place it wherever you can on the ground. You always want to do it on the ground, not on the treads. And then you move it until you're in the um, general area that you want it to be in. Um, did that just fall down? Is the anchor block off? That was weird. I don't know. It looks like the wheel fell down a bit. But anyways, let's try that again. Pretty sure I need it right here. And it plays too. Nice. But yeah, it's just a bit of a guessing game here until you get it in the right spots. Um, so you're going to place this old wheel first. You can do it with modern back wheels as well. And we're going to place a back wheel on top of the old wheel. And now, um, because these two are going to hit when I transfer this up here, as you'll see here, um, we're going to have to move it by 0.25 downwards so that we have space for the wheels to not get stuck to each other. Now that we got that moved down, we're going to take these two wheels and we're going to clone it up again. And you'll see how close these come to each other and you'll see why we had to add that 0 0.25 uh, spacing. So now what we're going to do is we're going to place whatever block you choose for the body to be able to out of on those. And now we're going to take a piston and we're going to put it on the top tread. And it placed it too for some reason. But once we've got that, we're going to start uh, tying all of this together. So, like, we're going to do this. And next, what we're going to do is we're going to mirror what we have here. And we're going to take this, 
and we're going to move it to the other side. I'm pretty sure it's like right here. No, that's touching. I think it's still, yeah, it's still touching. I need to move it over one more. Like I said, you just got to play around with positioning the wheels a bit. Now we're going to delete the one on this side, the obsidian block on the bottom wheel, and we're going to scale that one out. And next we're going to add beams here. You can make these however long you want. Um, this is going to be what chooses how wide your tank is. Um, I'm going to be doing 5 wide. Um, so that'll make the bar 10 when you mirror it. And now we've got to do the stabilizers for the treads. So we've got to find the middle of our treads first. So I'm going to base it off of the middle of these two poles. So we scale this up. Um, to be the same exact height as these poles. Yeah, it's off by like a smidgen, but I don't really care. And then in the middle of where you see the scaled blue, uh, circle, you place that block. And you don't really have to do this. Um, you have to have the block on top stay as that one block, but you can. you don't have to make this little neck that I did there. You could have just left a regular full block. Now we're going to put a hinge, and on that hinge we're going to place some wood, and we're going to move it down a little bit. I think that should be good. And after that, we're going to take a spring, and we're going to place it... Oh yeah, see, that's touching, so I need to move it down a little bit more. We're going to place it like this. And we're going to the settings, and we're going to set the stiffness to zero. Oh, we're going to set the damping to zero. Come on. There we go. And the minimum length we're going to set to 0 0.5. And the max length we just set to it as high as we can go. So like you can just put in 100 or whatever and it should go to like 51 or something like that. And now what we're going to do is we are going to move... No, wait, I'm doing this wrong. Sorry. We're going to put a wooden block back. And then we're going to move it down again. But this time we're going to move it down one extra space. So I think that would be here for the regular one. So we're going to add an extra 0.5 space there. Um, this way the springs have a little extra space to move around in. And now we're going to set to all the same settings. Um, stiffness, zero. Oop. Damping, zero. Max length, uh, minimum length, 0 0.5. Max length, size it can go. And you don't really have to worry about the target length. Um, that can just stay as whatever. Now we're going to place an obsidian right in the middle of these treads here. And it's not letting me select it. There we go. And that's the center. Um, it doesn't have to be obsidian. It can be any other block you want. But I just like using obsidian for some reason. It's strong and kind of lightweight. Now we're going to place a hinge on the spring. Stupid double place bug. And we're going to connect it to the pole that we have on the treads. So, let's scale this down a little bit. I made it too tall by accident. Now, the reason that we built this little thing here is so that these tank treads can't slide left or right um, off of the wheels. And now what we're going to do next is we're going to turn all of this invisible because it kind of messes up the clean look of the treads when it spins around. Um, yeah, transparency all the way up and collision off. Next up, we're going to mirror this whole thing. And now we're going to place a metal block in the bottom here, and we're going to scale it to fill in this whole area. This will make the, the uh, center of gravity lower so that the tank can climb better. And we are almost done. We just have to do some settings here. So we are going to want to turn the piston's target length to 3.3. Uh, and... Wheel speed to 30, 
wheel torque to three. Oh wait, the piston length is here. Sorry, target length was for the springs. Uh, yeah, three point three for the piston length. Yeah, you don't have to worry about the target length. And piston speed can stay as it is. Um, yeah, looks like all these settings are good. Um, so now we're going to place our seat that's going to control everything. And to make this mobile friendly, I'm going to place a lever that controls the pistons. You could certainly do it with the seat instead if you don't care about mobile. Um, but I'm just going to do it with the lever here. So we are going to bind the pistons to the lever first. So got that one, that one, and that one, and that one. And then we're going to unbind the pistons from the seat. Oh, it didn't. Hello? No, I don't want to. I don't want to bind you. I want to unbind you. Oh, it's going to do it again. Okay. And that's. Oh my gosh, I'm doing it again. I keep thinking that the other one that's going through the seat is the one that's actually the seat. But, anyways. Uh, now we are going to take these wheels on the outsides and we're going to unbind them from the seat. Hate this lag. And we're going to take the ones on the left side and we're going to set forwards to D or the right button. We're going to set backwards to A or the left button. Now for these ones on the right side, we are going to set them to forwards is going to be A or the left button and backwards is going to be D or the right button. And now that that's all set, our tank should be good to go. So before we launch it, we are going to save it of course. Tank example is what I have it named as here. And now uh, you can use the select tool or you can launch the boat and let's see how this works. Use that to tighten up the tracks. And we are rolling. Let's see if we can get up this ledge. Oh, easily. The last thing we're going to do is test this on my off-road testing course. Now, here we are on the testing course. It's just this long strip of toy blocks that I added some obstacles to that slowly get harder as you go. And I'm going to jump in here. And actually, before we head off, I'm going to take the wheels and I'm going to turn their speed down to 20. Because there's a little problem. This floor is so thin that the tank treads can move too fast and clip through it, making the tank get stuck. So we're just going to go at 20. Actually, let me make this wall transparent so that you can see the tank through it. Oh, it's still got texture. Um, I'll just remove it then. This feels like I'm playing hill climb racing doing this. All right. First two stages blows through them like there's nothing. Third stage, a little bit of a struggle on the slope. Oh, those fell out. <laughs> well, anyways, on to the fifth stage. Ooh, had almost a little bit of trouble on that staircase. Oh, 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 we made it over the slope. And let me just remove this next wall. Here we are in stage six. It's getting a little rougher now. It's stage seven. Are we gonna make it? Ooh. Oh, we made it. Little kick on the end there. That was strange. Stage eight has no trouble on these staircases. I probably should have made those harder. Oh, it looks like this might be the end of it. Maybe if I get a little speed boost into it. Not quite. I'm going to cheat a little bit here and turn the wheel speed up to 50. Let's see if that gets us over the ramp without clipping through the floor. And we made it. Now, I didn't actually expect myself to get any further than that last slope, so I just stopped building there and left a little note in case I somehow did. So, overall, this tank design is really versatile and pretty good at off-roading. 
If you guys enjoyed the video, leave a like and a comment, and I hope you guys enjoy building tanks.